Hello. Hi, Neil. It's Amy calling from ABC Radio Adelaide. How are you? I'm very good, thank you, Amy. How are you? I'm really well, thanks. And thanks for agreeing to have a chat with us this afternoon. We appreciate you doing this. That's all right. Now, Sonia Feldhoff is the host of the show, but I think you guys have spoken a couple of times at this point, haven't you? Uh, we've spoken once briefly about a week ago or so ago, yep. Lovely. Well, stay on the line if you're um, all set to go. We'll be with you soon. All right, no worries. Thank you. It's um, 10 minutes to two here on ABC Radio Adelaide, South Australia and Broken Hill. Well, the evidence is mounting. What have the latest interviews on thylacine sightings seen about the likelihood of Tassie Tigers in our Adelaide Hills? You'll find out next. Know the story with ABC News. Get the latest breaking news with live notifications whenever you want, wherever you are. Considering going to zero emissions. We'll go ahead as planned abruptly ended the case. It will help us all get back to normal and back to all the things that we love. Those are the kind of things that work. There's hope for a brighter future. ABC News, Australia's most trusted news source. Head to news.abc.net.au or download the ABC News app. This is Afternoons with Sonia Feldhoff on ABC Radio Adelaide, South Australia and Broken Hill. Well, it was a couple of weeks ago that I introduced you to Kane Buffali. Now, Kane in the hills uh, with his wife was driving and came across at night what he was pretty certain was a Tassie tiger in the Adelaide hills. Didn't manage to film it, but he was absolutely certain. Now, that prompted a whole lot of you to put up your hand and say, look, yep, I think we've seen a, a, a Tassie tiger in the hills as well. Neil Waters is president of the Thylacine Awareness Group of Australia. At the time, he said he was going to interview many of those people who said they'd had these sightings. Neil, how legitimate do you think many of these sightings were from the interviews you've done? Um, well, the thing that brings the legitimacy factor in for me is the fact that so many of these people are just doing their random everyday sort of things and encounter this animal and with no reason to report such a thing or make such a thing up, I suppose. And, you know, people from all walks of the life have these experiences and a lot of people don't talk about it because they don't want to be laughed at. But yeah, it's a lot more common than what you might realise. So because these people weren't actually out thylacine hunting or, or snapping, so to speak, um, you feel that how, – how many interviews did you do following that? I've done three so far. Yeah. Um, there was a few other people in the group chat that um, had sort of mentioned it, but they haven't all got back to me. So I've got a few um, message requests sitting there basically on Facebook hoping to get a chat to them. But, look, people very independently describe – identical features about an animal that fit descriptions of thylacines rather than foxes or dingoes. So, you know, at, at some point in time, you've got to let that testimony have some weight and credence, I suppose. Neil, it, it struck me at the time when we were talking about this and someone texted in saying, well, a fairly legitimate point, if this is really happening, why haven't we seen a carcass or bones one of them must have died at some point because it's suggested it's not just one animal that it's different groups of animals yeah yeah absolutely and like that that's always the question that comes up with a lot of people that are a bit skeptical about these things and it's a legitimate question but in summer um in south australia especially where it's quite hot um how long does a dead kangaroo last on the side of the road before it's just a pile of fur and bones it's not very long um, there are stories and rumours about these things being found in Australia on the mainland and being handed to officials at universities and then these carcasses disappearing into the ether. So, and you know, then there's the two that were found on the Nullarbor in the caves there in the 1960s that were very fresh and were carbon dated to be at 2,000 years old, but they had maggot casings next to them and and eyeballs and, and blood substances under them. So maybe the carbon dating wasn't real good. I don't know. But look, um, sooner or later, someone's either going to run one over or they're going to um, find a dead one and, and the, the cat will be out the bag, I'd say. Um, Neil Waters, so you've done these interviews. You reckon uh, there's some legitimacy. Was I right in saying that someone has recorded 
what they believe to be a Tasmanian tiger? As in the audio? Yes. Yeah, that came from Tasmania only oh, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. I got that audio, and I've put that up on our YouTube with um, a whole heap of other animals to compare it to, and it sounds like nothing. Like someone said on our on our Facebook group that it sounded like a barking owl. Well, it doesn't because we put a barking owl up there, and there's no barking owls in Tasmania either. That's the other important point there. So. Oh, all right, well, let's, let's play it. We've actually got the audio um, from your YouTube site. This is what is, uh, is being suggested is a modern-day thylacine. doesn't sound like anything I thought a dog or wolf-like creature might sound like, Neil. No, it doesn't. But um, if you look through the history books and all of the notes that were taken about these things back when there was lots of them around in Tasmania, they were known to make a, an unusual yipping kind of noise when they were hunting. And it's well documented. Now, now you, you said some had suggested it was a barking owl. We've got the sound of a barking owl. Uh, let's hear and compare it to what you've just heard. Go for it. Wow, that sounds more like a, a doggy kind of sound to me than, yeah, than, this, than the first one, actually. It does, but you, you're confusing a marsupial with a dog because of their appearance, you see. This is the thing. This yeah. convergent evolution is a funny thing. Um, and, you know, Australia's marsupials have, have produced a critter to fit just about every niche that all of the placental mammals from Europe and Africa and Americas have produced as well, but they're a marsupial version. So there are subtle differences, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, look, uh, where, where to from here then? You've spoke, you're waiting to do a few more interviews, but certainly the sightings you've seen or uh, people who've said they've seen them in the Adelaide Hills, uh, you feel have got a certain ring of legitimacy? Absolutely, because over the last seven years or eight years, well, I started this quest off in South Australia. Um, I'm in Tassie now, but... Um, you know, there's been dozens of people come forward with sightings in the Adelaide Hills, and there seems to be a few sightings hot spots. And um, Achunga is definitely a sightings hot spot. Anywhere around Mount Barker, there's a good chance that if you're driving around often enough at night, you may encounter one of these things. All right. Well, um, I'm sure you'd still continue to love, to love to hear from people who perhaps feel they're in that group. Um, but does this add to... Um, uh, in any substantial way um, to, to sort of the, the growing evidence about Adelaide Hills, Tassie Tigers, in your view, Neil? Uh, yeah, I think it does uh, from an oral perspective. I mean, obviously, it's not scientific evidence, but it's still evidence. Um, we, did, we have got a couple of guys in South Australia that have been working in the mid-north, and they got some really interesting thermal images of an animal and a fox as well, and the animal they got uh, does look very different to the fox. That's also on our YouTube channel. So, look, the more of these areas we come across where they're likely to adventure, the more chance we've got of getting a camera there and maybe getting a nice clear shot one day, hopefully. All right. Well, Neil, thank you for joining us. Neil Waters, president of the Thylacine Awareness Group of Australia. Uh, this text says, I'm sure I've seen one across the Copper Coast Highway between Pascaville and Kalpara one evening. It wasn't a dog and it wasn't a fox. I wish to remain anonymous. All right. No worries. Awesome. <laughs> um, look, uh, uh, look, I'm seeing more texts about potential sightings. I'll read them out after 2 o'clock. Uh, and that, of course, is uh, when we will continue... Uh, with the afternoon's program. Okay, it's 23 minutes past two. You're listening to ABC Radio Adelaide, South Australia and Broken Hill. Uh, now, I, I promised you I'd get back to some of those texts that some of you sent in regarding Tasmanian tigers, which we were talking about just before two o'clock, if you've only just joined us. Um, some interviews lately since that last sighting in the Adelaide Hills uh, by a gentleman we spoke to a couple of weeks ago has um, found, uh, I think, two, possibly three people who've um, actually got pretty legitimate stories for having seen a Tasmanian tiger in the Adelaide Hills. 
um, our, our guests mentioned around the Achunga area, even Mount Barker. And they have in recent weeks also from Tasmania, and this isn't from Adelaide, but from Tasmania, uh, received what is believed to be the sound of a Tasmanian tiger. Anyway, we've got quite a few texts from you on that one. Uh, Adam says, My late partner was hitchhiking to Borough about 35 years ago. She was standing in the rain at a road junction in the mid-north trying to get a lift and saw a carcass on the side of the road that she believed to be a Tasmanian tiger. It was the right size head shape and had the stripes of a Tasmanian tiger, says Adam. Mm-hmm. 